The Scram 411 is a much more stripped down urban take if you like on the much loved Himalayan. So what does this sub 5,000 pound machine bring to the party? Let's start with the engine and obviously this is not a fast bike but the 411cc 24 horsepower single cylinder engine does push you along quite nicely. But it starts to run out of puff above 60 miles an hour when you get up into fifth gear. Motorway riding can become tiresome quite quickly but that's not what this bike is all about. It's got a nice character which to be honest is more suited to chugging around the countryside or attacking the urban jungle. It's pretty flexible the engine actually, you can uh, anywhere between sort of 30 and 50, 60 you can keep it in third gear. It is an understressed motor and it does feel robust so I'm pretty confident that this will tackle anything that you can throw it and as we've seen with travellers such as Norley or Nietzsche Boots Channel they do seem to put up with quite a bit of punishment. Overtakes on this bike require careful planning, but that's what you'd come to expect when you've only got 24 horses between your legs. Fuel consumption is averaging in the mid 60s, so actually the range from this 15 litre tank is not too bad at all. Turning to ride quality at under five grand, I wasn't to be honest expecting the best stamp suspension, and I was right to think that. It's all a little bit bouncy on anything other than smooth tarmac. As I said, it's a little bit bouncy. Just needs a little bit more damping, but it's not bad to be fair. I've ridden worse. The seat is broad and pretty comfortable and the riding position is good too. The 795 millimeter seat height makes it pretty accessible for shorter riders. The brakes, however, are a bit of a mixed bag. The front, to be honest, really lacks bite and feel and there's not that much power there either. In fact, the rear brake is sharper and it does a better job at bringing this 185 kilo machine to a halt. So to give you an example of what I was talking about, about the brakes, front brake, I oh, really have to pull hard and it's not, not really pulling up that strong. From a similar sort of speed in third gear, the rear brake is just as effective, if not more effective. But these drawbacks don't change the fact that the Scram is great fun to ride. And of course, you do have to take the price tag into consideration. It's off road. But you will have a lot of fun on this bike. And you can't see it because of the dark visor. I have got a big grin on my face. I think Ari have done a great job with the styling. Yes, it is essentially a naked Himalayan with a smaller front wheel, but it looks smart, particularly in this silver spirit paint job, which is a 100 pound premium over the base colors. Royal Enfield offer a three year warranty, which is good. And as with all budget bikes, looking after it is key. It requires servicing every 3000 miles, which includes the valve check. However, it is a basic engine, so this is neither time consuming or expensive on its own. In terms of equipment, well, there's not that much to speak of. The new Speedo is neat and very clear with plenty of information. The digital section in the center displays time, gear selected, fuel gauge, and trip meters, basically everything that you need. The Scram also comes as standard with the Tripper turn-by-turn -turn navigation display. I must admit I found this really easy to connect and the app is very intuitive to use. It works well and I think it's a very handy addition. So we're authorised and paired, perfect. So there you go, there's the route, hit navigation. One feet turn left. And as you may have picked up there, you do get audio notifications. gone off in a different direction so it's now just recalculated it it's telling me to turn right in 389 feet there we go that's my right turn stuck behind the caravan so you can see how it counts down you get different coloured icons it's 
just now gone red to show me that I'm getting close to the junction so I don't need to show you the, the route all the way to the destination you can just see how simple and easy that is it's like the B line but just with a more of a digital display than just the LCD arrow that is it though that is all you get other than ABS and talking of which you can't switch the rear ABS off but having said that, given the suspension limitations, I can't really see this bike straying too far away from the tarmac. Now it's probably a little bit unfair to say that uh, this is not gonna venture too or far off-road because I think actually it's more capable than you would expect. And as I say, we've seen people like Norley Schoenmacher on the Itchy Boots channel, who's taken these to some pretty remote places and through some pretty tough conditions well not this but the Himalayan and um, seems to put up with the abuse but for most owners I think probably something like this is going to be adventurous enough just a little bit of byways places to get to somewhere interesting gravel roads onto campsites and such like just gotta watch out for dog walkers not doggers, dog walkers. Well, maybe doggers, I don't know. There is one slight issue I have found off-road, I'll be honest, and that is standing. Uh, initially because there's big rubber blocks in these pegs which you probably want to take out, but actually as you stand up, these rather funky looking side panels stick out a little bit too far. And so they kind of hinder your car, or they hinder my calf muscles, and I haven't got massive calf muscles. But they do kind of get in the way. If you're standing up with your legs kind of more bent, they're not too bad. But if you try to stand up perfectly straight, I've got to sort of splay my ankles out on those bits. So if you intend to ride off-road a fair amount, you might want to think about changing those if you're going to be standing a lot. But it is good fun to ride off-road. I've done a couple of little byways just like that, and it goes through there. No problem at all. Obviously, no traction control. And actually when I mentioned it before, and I said you can't switch the ABS off at the rear, by the same token you can't switch the ABS off at all. So if you are riding this on off-road and you, you're in more technical scenarios, you are going to have the ABS on the front as well, which you can't get rid of. But I kind of see this as being more of an urban scrambler, if you like, with a little bit of dirt thrown in. And as such, it's good. All in all, the Scram 411 is a good motorcycle. I think it looks great, it goes pretty well too, and I can forgive the suspension and brake shortcomings on a bike that retails for £4,600. So if you're looking for a fun bike for short commutes, exploring the country lanes, buzzing around town, then this will keep you happy and it will keep a smile on your face whilst you're riding it too. So the best way I think I can describe this bike is by using the word charming, and that's no bad thing at all. So if you've got any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. And all that leaves me to say is, until next time, thanks for watching, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.